the technique we are going to present is for inguinal hernia repair. It was developed by my father, Antonio Guarnieri, on December 1988. This technique has now a new variant developed by me on November 2009. The primary purpose of this technique is to modify the anatomy that breeds the hernia respecting the physiology. With this variant we avoid the prosthetic material in most of patients. Have a nice vision. Here is represented a right inguinal canal. In hernia patients, the insertion of the oblique muscle is rather high. Two are the critical points that should be considered, the internal ring and the inguinal triangle. The internal ring is involved in external oblique hernia. The internal ring must be calibrated and reinforced. The inguinal triangle is involved in direct hernia. The inguinal triangle must be reduced and reinforced. In case of indirect hernia, the treatment of the internal ring can be performed in two steps. First step, isolation of the transversalis fascia under the internal oblique muscle. At this level, the transversalis fascia is stronger. Second step, the cremasteric fibers are incised medially and cranially to isolate the cord elements. In case of external oblique hernia, the isolated indirect hernia sac is pushed back towards the preperitoneal space. The preperitoneal fat is kindly isolated and detached from the transversalis fascia and pushed to expose the lateral border of the rectus muscle. An incision of the transversalis fascia is thus performed medially and cranially under the internal oblique muscle. The isolated cord elements are brought to the medial angle of the incision and are then transposed medially and cranially under the internal oblique muscle. The original internal ring surrounded by weak tissue is closed with the running suture. Keeping the previous running suture, the cremaster is overlapped to reinforce and completely close the old internal ring. The internal ring is now calibrated reinforced and placed in a stronger area of the transversalis fascia under the internal oblique muscle. Let us see now an anatomical view of the inguinal triangle in case of direct hernia. Please keep attention to the internal oblique muscle to the medial border of the transversalis fascia, to the lateral border of rectus muscle, to the lateral border of the transversalis fascia, and to the medial external oblique oponeurosis 
that is detached by the rectus muscle. In case of direct hernia, an incision of the transversalis fascia is performed from the internal ring toward the pubic tubercle. The preperitoneal fat is kindly pushed and detached from the lateral border of the rectus muscle and isolated from the transversalis fascia. If necessary, it is possible to place a fenestrated mesh over the preperitoneal fat before starting the running suture of the transversalis fascia. In direct hernia, the running suture joins the lateral flap of the transversalis fascia with the lateral border of the rectus muscle fascia. The running suture starts at the level of the pubic tubercle to reach the epigastric vessels. The internal ring for now remains untreated. On the way back the running suture joins the medial flap of the transversalis fascia over the lateral one. We do not take the inguinal ligament in the suture. The transversalis fascia is now double-breasted. Now it's possible to treat the internal ring as previously described. Let's now consider the treatment of the superficial layer. Please consider where is the internal oblique muscle located and the lateral flap of the external oblique oponeurosis. A running suture joins the lateral flap of the external oblique oponeurosis with the rectus muscle fascia. The suture starts from the point of inferior insertion of the internal oblique muscle toward the pubis. Please look at the arrows. At this level, a new external ring is performed. The remaining lateral flap of the external oblique oponeurosis is sutured over the spermatic cord. If necessary, a relaxing incision on the rectus muscle fascia can be performed to lateralize the rectus muscle and to reduce the size of the inguinal triangle. Please consider also the position of the double breast external oblique aponeurosis. Let us consider a new possibility, the new variant. After performing the relaxing incision on the rectus muscle fascia, the fascia can be overturned and used as a biological prosthesis. The medial flap of the external oblique aponeurosis is sutured over the lateral one, leaving space for the exit of the spermatic cord. In the new variant, the rectus muscle fascia is placed between the two external oblique layers, acting as a biological prosthesis and expanding the rectus muscle laterally. Let us see a section of the Guarnieri's classic technique. As you can see, the rectus muscle is on the right and the inguinal ligament on the left. Between them we have four layers made by the overlapped external oblique oponeurosis and the overlapped 
transversalis fascia. In the new variant, the relaxing incision of the rectus muscle fascia expands the rectus muscle towards the inguinal ligament, reducing suture tension and reducing the passive area, the area without musculature, of the inguinal triangle. In the new variant, we have one more layer, the fifth layer, that is the overturned rectus muscle fascia. In this way, we get the reinforcement of the inguinal triangle. The Guarnieri's new technical variant expands the rectus muscle, reinforces the inguinal triangle, reduce suture tension, reduce the extension of the inguinal triangle. Why to use this technical variant? According to the Laplace law of physics, we have to reduce and reinforce the inguinal triangle. With this new variant, we do not use any mesh for treating inguinal primary hernia. We have now a recurrence rate of 0.5%.